All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're talking about the Brava crop. What is the Brava crop of figs? We're also gonna be talking about the interesting world of Bravas. It's a very fascinating topic. And we're gonna be looking at a number of trees now that we're in the spring here in the Philadelphia area. I have a lot of trees that are producing Brava this year. And we're gonna highlight some really impressive Brava producers for you so that if you guys are interested in growing Brabas yourself, you can now choose a variety that is very specific in giving you Brabas. So first off, what is a Braba? We can see here that we're looking at this branch. This is the Braba down below. This is the first crop of the season that typically forms as the tree wakes up and will slowly expand and swell in size. As the tree is forming new leaves, the buds are swelling and the Brabas are forming. And they form on last year's growth. You can see here, this branch and this point right here is a cutoff line essentially between last year's growth down below and the new growth of the season. And the new growth of the season, you can tell there's a difference in color. And the new growth is where the main crop form. They're typically smaller as you see right there and about 30 to 45 days behind in their development. Every new leaf corresponds or should correspond to a new fig. So the Brabas will always be below the new leaves. So that's a good way to determine actually. We're getting a hurricane. I don't know if you guys noticed <laughs> just all of a sudden. Um, so let's talk about now the fascinating world of Brabas. Now that we've kind of defined them, I'll also just say really quickly, if we're gonna be a little bit more strict in our definition, um, I think a Braba really would only form if the tree goes dormant. If the tree never truly goes dormant, I don't think you can consider those uh, Brabas. So if you live in like a tropical place or South Florida, those are just a continuation of the main crop. As the tree continues to grow and never really goes dormant, I think there's a distinction there. So let's talk about the world of Brabas really quickly. Um, there's four different types of figs four classifications of figs. There's one male fig called the capra fig. Those are not edible. They do produce pollen that will might be necessary in a minute here. And there's three types of female figs. There's the Smyrna, the San Pedro, which both of which require pollination of the main crop, the new figs that form on the new growth. And there's the common fig. The common fig doesn't require pollination whatsoever to produce its main crop. But across the board, whether or not we're talking about the San Pedro figs or the, or the common figs, excuse me, the Brabas do not require pollination and will never require pollination. A Smyrna fig, although the San Pedro and the Smyrna both require pollination of the main crop, the Smyrna will not actually produce Brava. If you have a main crop fig that does require pollination and you're trying to classify it. If it does produce Brava, it's automatically just considered a San Pedro. I think we need to get really more defined with these classifications and it can be very confusing as I just led to, but if we get more defined, it's gonna get even more confusing. So a Smyrna will never really produce a Brava, but a San Pedro will. But what's important here, I think, to, to note again is that Brabas do not require pollination, regardless of the type, and only the common figs and the San Pedros will produce Brabas. The most well-known San Pedro fig is called Desert King. You can find this all over the internet. A lot of people grow it. It's common in the Pacific Northwest and in more mild places where Brabas are a necessity like the United Kingdom as well. They're uh, also the Bay Area, by the way, places that are very mild in the summer rely on this Brava crop because the Brava crop, again, ripens 30 to 40 days before the main crop. So it's a nice early crop that typically also doesn't taste as good as the main crop, but it's earlier and typically reliable on certain varieties and also typically doesn't produce nearly as many figs depending on the variety. The other problem that is presented is that you have to preserve this last year's growth because if you cut off all the last year wood, the wood from last year, you lose all the Brabus. The Brabus are formed in the fall, essentially, on the branches 
as the tree essentially is going dormant and kind of settling in for the winter time. Um, they could also be, and this is a little bit of an intricate topic here, but again, this is the world of Bravas. They could be main crop fruits that never swelled to a larger size. They were set on the branches, and but the, the fact that you were so close to the fall and so close to the winter time, the tree recognized that, the colder temperatures, maybe even the shorter daylight periods, and said, you know what, we're just not going to produce these figs. We're not going to let them swell, and so they're not going to get to a larger size. They'll stay dormant on the branch until the next season where we can actually grow and let them grow to a larger size. And that may be really what is defined as a Brava, just main crop that was overwintered on last year's branches. And here's the weird and tricky part, right? I mean, this is a variety here called Hatib de Argentile. Didn't know it was supposed to produce Brava. Didn't think it was really meant to. Even though it's a common fig, not every common fig produces Brava. Same thing here with this Smith tree that we have. Again, this is also producing Brava. This is what's known as, both of those varieties are what are known as a Unifera common fig. And so there's two types of common fig that people classify. We want to get even more confusing. Again, the world of Bravas is just, it's not clear. It's not defined. The rules always seem to be broken. And I think if we learn more about these figs, we'll eventually understand more about the Bravas. And that's an important mission I think some people will have to take up in the world of figs, but in the world of common figs, there are two types, as I said, unifera and bifera. Again, uni means one, bi means two. So the unifera figs like Smith, or at least what was thought to be a unifera fig, should only produce the main crop, that one crop. Bifera figs, like the one behind you, is an Adriatic fig I have called prosciutto. That I would consider to be a bifera variety meaning it does produce a reliable Brava crop, but also produces main crop. And so I think what could be happening on these varieties that are considered unifera, meaning they're only gonna produce that one crop and not produce the Bravas, it could be just the, the simply fa simple fact that the main crop are not forming late into the season and swelling, I should say. They're forming, but they're not swelling. And the tree again is just saying, all right, we're close to the winter time. You just stay dormant. And then the following year, maybe we can get growing here in the form of a Brava. And so that might be, I think, just a more realistic view of what every Brava actually is. Um, but it could be a little bit more intricate than that. And uh, I don't wanna speak if that's the case on every variety, but certainly that's the case I'm seeing what seems like to be the case on some of these figs that you would consider unifera, meaning that they're not supposed to produce Brava. So that's the interesting world of figs. Now let's look at some of the trees that are producing Brava this year in a high rate. This is prosciutto, again, an Adriatic fig. The Adriatic figs are the figs that are very similar to the white Adriatic that was grown commercially in California, along with Black Mission and Brown Turkey. Many years ago, Adriatic was a very popular fig because it ships, it ships very well. It's beautiful. It tastes so great. They're very good figs. Smith's another impressive Brava producer that's become actually very reliable. For two years now, it's been produce, producing Brava consistently. Hatib de Argentile, again, we looked at, didn't know that was supposed to produce Brava, another Unifera variety that I am surprised with. Down below here, this is a dwarf fig called Little Ruby. It's related to Hardy Chicago. It was bred with Hardy Chicago in it. And Hardy Chicago is one of those figs, like the Adriatics that we just looked at, that will produce Brava, but because there's so many names for a Hardy Chicago, although this is not another name, this is a child of Hardy Chicago. But in the case of the Adriatics, in the case of the Hardy Chicago figs, not every hardy Chicago is created equal. Not every Adriatic is created equal. Because they're so good, they're such amazing figs, they have so many names. They're grown all over the world, and it's just inevitable that they're gonna gain a lot of names, come from many different places. And so I've trialed a lot of the hardy Chicago figs here, others have as well. Same thing with the Adriatics. Not every Adriatic produces a reliable Brava crop. 
that prosciutto fig is seemingly a very good producer, as well as another variety I have called Verdino del Nord from Tatiana. This one here, Little Ruby, has seemingly been a very reliable Breba producer, producing about 12 Brebas two seasons ago. I think I may have gotten a few last year, but not many. And now this year, actually, it's not producing any Breba. So is this a reliable Breba producer? Is it Unifera? Is it Bifera? Maybe two years ago, when it produced those 12 Breva, it actually was main crop that the tree, again, didn't want to swell in size and didn't want to produce. So, in fact, this might be, again, the second year in a row with either zero or very limited amount of Brevas. And so, therefore, what I'm trying to get at is that the variety that you choose for your Brevas matters. If you choose Hardy Chicago, you could end up with a tree that produces a large amount of Brevas, but not every Hardy Chicago does. As I said, prosciutto is seemingly that one for me that does produce a good Breva crop. Another tree that I think is worth looking at this year is this Ronde Bordeaux, translating to Round of Bordeaux, and it is producing Brevas. In fact, quite a few on this tree. This is overwintered really, really well. Is this a Unifera fig? There's another Breva down there. Or is it a Bifera fig? Will these figs actually ripen? Is the Ronde Bordeaux, the questions I've been asking myself, there's about eight or nine or even 12 Breva. I don't remember the exact number here. Are they going to form and actually swell to a larger size? Or are they gonna to get to a large size or a smaller size, excuse me, a little bit larger than what you see and then fall off the tree? Is the tree going to reject them? Are they going to ripen? And if they do ripen, then what are you gonna consider this variety? We know Ronde Bardot is Unifera. We know it's not supposed to produce Brava, but if my tree does produce Brava, what's happening here? A really good Brava producer I've been finding or one of the better ones is this fig here called LSU Huye. This is a fig that was bred by LSU and it was using Celeste as its parentage. And that's what the LSU varieties are. Most of them, if not all of them, are bred with Celeste in some form or fashion. Now this is a really good Celeste tree that I have called Stallion. It's really hardy, it's growing really well, but Celeste, from what we all know, Celeste is probably the classic Unifera fig, meaning that it's not gonna produce Brava. And this tree here has not even really formed Brava. If it does form Brava, they typically will just fall right off the tree very quickly in their, in their development. And so you would imagine a fig that actually was bred with Celeste, like LSU Huye over here, would not actually produce Brava but it is. And in fact, um, another variety I have over here called LSU Champagne, again, also bred with Celeste, is also producing Breba. Um, LSU Scott's Yellow. And so you would think, again, because it is related, meaning it wouldn't produce Breba, but there it is. One of the best Breba producers I have is this fig here called Moro, Figo Moro da Caneva. It's from Caneva, Italy. It's grown commercially for its main crop and its Brava production. And this tree has got, I think, what's going to be about 20 Bravas on it this year. Really, really impressive fig. We've also overwintered some of these over here. This is Barbalone. And Barbalone is a really great Brava producer for the Pacific Northwest. It's been kind of proven by a grower there named Polly, who kind of introduced this fig for the first time to the fig communities. It's basically a mutation of White Marseille. And White Marseille is also a really good Brava producer. Here's actually a Brava forming down there on White Marseille. Not every strain of White Marseille is created equal though. That's the other thing. And that, again, just because you have a White Marseille doesn't mean it's gonna do what I say it is. Here's Brianzolo Rosso, another fig that I thought was actually Unifera. It's a very early fig to ripen. And so typically the super, super early figs like uh, Ronde Bordeaux, Celeste, again, Brianzola Rosso, they don't produce Brava. 
the Brava crop can in fact delay that main crop production. Here's a weird tree back here that I know does produce Brava reliably, but this year it's producing 15. This little tree, just these two branches, if you count the number of Brava, is 15. That's incredible, unheard of. Uh, this is called White Triana. And White Triana is a very similar fig that I find you guys ought to look into. That's similar actually to this one here called Safrari. And Safrari is also producing Brava in here. And Safrari and, the, and White Triana, both are very similar to a fig called Canadria, Atriano, Lyndhurst White, Laterola, uh, Undone Mitica. There's so many names that are very similar, but they're all slightly different than each other. What I really like about White Triana is it's better flavor, better berry flavor. Safrari seems to be a much hardier version than White Triana thus far. Here is my young Desert King. And you can see it's over here. We, we actually bent it over like the other figs and uh, buried it with wood chips. And it did overwinter really well and is going to produce three Brava. So uh, four Brava, actually six. <laughs> okay. Got to count better there. They're a little hidden sometimes. But this is going to produce six Brava. So that's pretty good. Even for such a young tree that we're still missing growth here from the tips that either died from the winter or was pruned. And so the further up the branches you go, typically the more Bravas you can, uh, you can produce. Um, this fig here, Azores Dark, is a hardy Chicago type that is indeed producing Brava as well. Here's another really good Brava producer, I think is fairly, un fairly underrated, is uh, Neruccio de Elba. And uh, Neruccio de Elba is a really good producer of figs. This tree here, I think it's got about eight or nine different Brava on it. Um, almost all the trees I have planted in the ground here, it's crazy, but as they continue to get older, if they're meant to produce Brava, they're producing more and more of it every year. Another Azores Dark right here, that's swelling some Brava. This is uh, Green Michurinska. Don't know if it is supposed to produce Brava, but there you go. There's some Brava there, and this tree probably will have at least six or so, maybe a half dozen Brava. Uh, when it's all said and done. You can see they're really small there on the branches and it's hard to see them, but um, I assume most of them will swell, get to a larger size. Also really one of the best Brava producers that I would recommend for people in, you know, Brava land, <laughs> the Pacific Northwest and mild climates. What you really want to go for is a number of figs that I think are the, the very best. So let me just recommend them right now. One of them, again, is behind me. It's called Long de Oot. Produces giant Brabas. They're very tasty. And uh, I would just highly recommend that variety. There's also Desert King, Vila de Bordeaux. Um, I think Moro de Caneva we can probably put into that class, but there was two other classic figs I was thinking of. Um, some kind of White Triana, Safrari, Atriano, that classification of fig. A nice Adriatic fig I think would be great. And, um, oh man, there's one that I'm not thinking of. Bar Malone would also be a great fig. So that's a really good selection there. I think that I'm able to help you guys out with in terms of the selection. Um, but most of them are easy to find. Like Long de Oot and Villa de Bordeaux, Desert King are classic, very easy to find all over the internet. Um, you kind of can't go wrong with those. And uh, yeah, that right there is the lesson on Brabas. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you soon, okay? Hit that subscribe button. Check out the videos that we've done here on, on all the other figs. And check out my blog, figboss.com, for a companion guide, actually, to this video. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.